Back in the 1990s, when Universal Studios first bought the rights to Marvel icon, The Incredible Hulk, it was really only a matter of time before attempts were made to get a movie made. Now, at one point, we nearly got a Hulk movie that may have been the most unique and singular version of the character that we may have ever seen on screen. It would have been directed by Jonathan Hensley and been released in the late 1990s. So, what if Jonathan Hensley's Hulk movie was made? In the later 1990s, Universal Studios had been attempting to get a new movie about the Incredible Hulk off the ground. Their first effort would have been based off a script written by John Turman, who ultimately decided to leave the project due to having a fear of studio interference, I don't blame him at all, so Universal decided to move on without him. They were hoping to convince Joe Johnston, director of The Rocketeer and Jumanji, to direct the new Hulk movie. Jonathan Hensley, the movie's producer, and Joe Johnston had actually worked on Jumanji together, so they were hoping that he would convince Joe Johnston to sign on, and he initially was indeed going to be directing the movie seemingly, with he and Hensley set to sign a pay or play contract, which basically means to get paid whether the movie actually gets made or not. Now Johnston, however, ended up leaving the project during negotiations, because he read an early script for October Sky, and was honestly more interested in directing that instead. Universal CEO Casey Silver then turned to Jonathan Hensley, but this time he asked if he'd be interested in directing the movie instead of producing it, based off a script that would be written by Zach Penn. Penn would actually end up eventually working on a number of future Marvel projects, including X2 X-Men United, X-Men The Last Stand, Elektra, the first Avengers movie, and The Incredible Hulk. Now, Penn's version of the movie would have actually started off with Bruce Banner being hassled by bikers in a bar. He would then attack them as The Incredible Hulk after they failed to listen to his warnings about not making him angry, because they wouldn't like him when he's angry, obviously. Now, we then cut back to a pre-Hulk Bruce Banner, and the rest of the movie would just be the origin story. However, this version of the movie was rejected, and Hensley ended up writing his own draft instead, which he co-wrote with Larry Karaszewski, Scott Alexander, and J.J. Abrams. Now, in this version of the movie, Bruce Banner would actually be doing a top-secret project that would be attempting to develop the first human colonies on the planet Mars. He'd be experimenting on various prisoners, who elected to be experimented on rather than be executed. These experiments would involve gamma radiation, and would be attempting to increase the human body's strength and metabolism for the harsher living conditions of the planet. He would be using genes from a bunch of different birds and insects, including the Hercules beetle, Pacific hummingbird, and the carpenter ant. Now, unbeknownst to Bruce, the prisoners are all secretly planning to try and escape, and one of them actually fakes having a seizure. However, their escape attempt ultimately fails when an explosion occurs, a huge one, causing all three prisoners along with Bruce to be directly exposed to gamma radiation. The prisoners, as well as Bruce, seemingly all come out unharmed, and the convicts manage to successfully escape and flee to a motel. The motel then gets surrounded by the National Guard, and the three soon turn into monstrous hybrids of an ant, hummingbird, and beetle, respectively. Bruce, watching on the news, realizes what's happened, and he attempts to try and stop them. Now, on the way there, he would transform into the Hulk for the very first time and crash his car. He then takes the fight directly to the hybrids, while also fending off attacks from the military. Hulk ultimately manages to outwit and defeat all three villains before escaping from the military, leading to a presumed sequel. Unlike with Zach Penn's draft, Jonathan Hensley received the stamp of approval from Universal. The Carpenter-Ant hybrid seemingly would have been played by Gregory Sporeleader, the Beetle hybrid seemingly would have been played by Lynn Red Williams, and the Hummingbird as well as the Hulk were sadly never casted, though Billy Crudup was at one point in talks to play Bruce Banner, but would later change his mind. Now, concept art was drawn up by Benton Jew, who was a visual effects art designer at Industrial Light and Magic, who would later go on to do some early concept artwork on Ang Lee's Hulk as well as the 
Incredible Hulk. Steve Johnson was set to work on the movie's visual effects, which would have been a combination of CGI and animatronics. The animatronics were apparently some of the largest ever made in movie history, with a Super Hulk animatronic being made that was apparently 30 feet tall. However, this movie was basically ripped away from Jonathan Hensley for something that wasn't even his fault. Basically, there was a huge change in leadership over at Universal. Casey Silver, who hired Hensley as director in the first place, was voted out due to not being firm enough with his directors, which led to many Universal movies going over budget and being massive flops. Now, considering this movie would have needed a budget of at least $100 million, not counting the millions already spent on pre-production, as well as the fact that Batman and Robin had recently come out and flopped hard at the box office, it's sadly a little bit understandable to me why this movie ended up being cancelled. So what do I think of Jonathan Hensley's Hulk? Honestly, there are parts of it I really like and parts of it I'm a little concerned about. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the plot. It seems a little too thin. Like, there doesn't seem to be nearly enough Hulk scenes in it. And I actually think in that regard, it might have come off worse than the Ang Lee version, which I already didn't think had enough Hulk in it. Um, so this one might have actually been even slower, but it probably wouldn't have been as long. So at least has that in its favor. It probably would have been less than two hours long. Uh, hopefully, anyway. Um, but there are other things about it I really like. Um, like, okay, I admit the villains being, uh, as far as I know, not from the comics would have been, you know, a bit annoying for comic book fans, I'm sure. That doesn't mean I don't think that sounds interesting. Like, because it's, it's been said before, this version of the Hulk would have been heavily inspired by David Cronenberg's The Fly. And I, I can tell, honestly, um, from, from what I've heard, I can tell that that's where the inspiration came from. And, you know, The Fly was a really good movie. It was a disgusting movie, but it was a really good movie. Um, and I, you know, even though I think the visual effects of this movie would have been incredible, like the animatronics looked great, the concept art looked great, I can't help but feel like maybe this movie wouldn't be appealing enough. Like, I, I'm worried that Universal would let him go too far with it. Like, say what you will, but I think that Universal was kind of right to fire Casey Silver. He did, you know, he was a little too lenient with his directors, in my opinion. And I don't think this is any exception. Jonathan Hensley had never directed a movie before this. He had only ever worked as a producer or a screenwriter. He had never directed anything before. And even Hensley himself has admitted that maybe this project was too big for a first-time director, and I would agree with that, I'm sorry to say. He seems like a nice guy, and I can tell he has talent and ambition, but for a first movie, this just seems a little too much for him, and even he agrees with me on that, so I don't think that I'm going to get too much flack for saying that, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I mean, so much money would have needed to be spent on this movie for those practical effects, which I think would have looked great, but then you have to remember that if they were going to take inspiration from the fly, it would probably alienate audiences is. Like, you know, parents aren't going to take their kids to see a movie with that much gore in it if it was going to be that gory or graphic. Um, so I just, I can't help but feel like maybe this movie wouldn't have done as well as Universal wanted it to. I'm sure that, you know, teenagers and adults would have absolutely loved this movie. Hopefully, anyway. I'm sure some diehard comic book fans would have some issues with it. Um, the script does seem a little too small scale. And I'm sorry, but the graphic stuff just, it doesn't sound like it would appeal to, to why wider audiences. So I can't fully say this is a huge missed opportunity of a film, but I also want to say it is because like one of the main issues about the Ang Lee one is that, you know, the the special effects were crap. I'm sorry, but they were. The Hulk looked terrible in that movie. Uh even for 2003 standards. Like that was the same year that like, you know, um Lord of the Rings Return of the King came out. And those movies were filmed years in advance for the record, and the CGI in the Lord of the Rings movies looked way better than 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 they did in Hulk. So, you know, and same with the Harry Potter movies, um, the, at least the second and third ones. Um, so I just, I felt like the Hulk movie we got from Ang Lee had no excuse to have such terrible CGI and the practical effects would have looked a hell of a lot better. But yeah, this movie, it just, it sounds very expensive. It has an inexperienced director at the helm. The plot is a little too thin and I'm worried it would alienate audiences. So even though I really want to say this is a huge missed opportunity and I do think it probably would have been better than the Ang Lee one. I can't from the bottom of my heart say I think it would have been like this great magnum opus Hulk masterpiece. 
it just sounds like there's there's too many you know there's too many questions it raises too many questions at least for me it does and i'm sure it did for universal as well which is why they pulled the plug on it but you know it is still heartbreaking to see because the people who worked on this movie whenever they talk about this movie in interviews they seem so sad like they seem so heartbroken this movie didn't happen and for that i feel really terrible for them and you know i do wish this had been the hulk movie we got instead of the ang lee one even if i don't think it would have been the best hulk movie ever maybe maybe it could have gotten better maybe he would have had people working with him that could have steered him in the right direction as a director um you know maybe it would have been ghost directed i don't know um but you know i i can't deny that the hulk is a great character and it really shouldn't be that hard to get a hulk movie right um and you know with great visual effects i mean that's that's gotta already be better than the ang lee one right <laughs> so that's just my opinion on it let me know what you guys think of jonathan hensley's hulk in the comments down below also in the comments down below make sure to give me more what if recommendations whether that's about the hulk uh spider-man marvel or whatever the hell else you can think of uh make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms and speaking of social media don't forget to follow me on instagram rinsler underscore productions and make sure to ring that notification bell to stay updated on all future uploads i upload new videos every day at 7 a.m eastern standard time so stay tuned tomorrow for that and i'll see all of you in the next video